In this video, I'm going to walk you through the nursing process step by step and be sure to watch the entire video. My name is Philip Pador, founder of NCLEX 45 Day Challenge, and you are watching the nursing process, where we give you the tips and the resources that you need to totally pass your NCLEX in 45 days and become the best nurse that you can be. So I have a question for you. Have you ever gotten confused over the nursing process? Well, you're not alone. This is exactly how I felt when I started nursing school. I felt so lost, and it's one of the most common questions that students ask me all the time. So in this video, we're going to cover the entire nursing process and the exact actual steps that you're going to follow with every single one of your patients. So, the nursing process is really just a step-by-step -step system for what exactly you will do as a nurse. So all you need to do is follow the steps and you will pass the NCLEX in no time. So let's talk about each of the steps of the nursing process, what they are and then what you will do in each step. So there's a mnemonic for nursing process. It's called ADPI or A-D-P-I-E. This stands for assessment, Diagnosis, Planning, Implementation, and Evaluation. So let's walk through each of the steps of the nursing process. So now the first step is the A in ADPI, which is Assessment. And Assessment is by far the number one most important thing you will ever do as a nurse. This is really where nurses shine knowing how to assess a patient really well. That's what's going on to set you apart. And anyone can give an injection, start an IV, or give meds, but it's your skills with the nursing assessment that will really help you stand out from the crowd and put you in the forefront of your nursing career. So what is exactly a nursing assessment? An RN uses a systematic, dynamic way to collect and analyze data about the client. The first step in delivering care. Assessment includes not only physiological data, but psychological, sociocultural, spiritual, economic, and lifestyle factors as well. The nursing assessment really has two main components. The first is collecting data, meaning taking vital signs, getting the patient's history, asking them questions about their lifestyles, and performing a head-to-toe assessment, or a focused nursing. And the second one is the critical thinking. So as you're performing the nursing assessment, you're taking vital signs, asking the patient's questions, and performing the head-to-toe assessment. You are constantly thinking about what could be going on with your patient and what you need to assess more further. So this is the critical thinking piece in, your, in the nursing. You are always on your game, noticing flight changes in the patient's condition how they respond to questions, and being aware of just something just isn't right or feels. So we'll talk about the first component of collecting data. You need to assess the, their vital signs, complete their head-to-toe -the assessment, and ask about their patient's history, of course. But you'll also want to ask questions about their day-to-day -day activities, like their spirituality, their psychological health, their relationship with each other, major life stressors things like that. So the nursing assessment actually goes way deeper beyond just performing a standard head-to-toe -to -toe assessment on your patient. You are actually asking a lot of personal questions. So you can take, the, take care of them better and provide better care. Now let's talk about the critical thinking piece of the nursing assessment. You will always be thinking about what the underlying problem is what's going on with them, and noticing if you need to assess a certain area further. So for example, let's say if you're taking a cardiac patient and you notice in the heart monitor is that their heart rhythm is going a little crazy. So you will run into the room, but when you get there, they are talking to you and they're moving around. And you're going to shock right away uh, to get their heart back to normal rhythm, right? No, you're not going to do that. You're going to say, hmm, 
Well, they're moving around a lot and I think I'll have to sit still him for a while and see what's, what this heart is really doing. So that is the critical thinking piece. Now, that's an extreme example. But you get the point, right? And here's a bonus tip for you. When it comes to nursing assessment, always assess your patient and not the monitor. If your patient is alert and oriented and talking to you and moving around, don't, jo don't just call it a code. Because the cardiac monitor was telling you that a code was necessary, right? Use your awesome critical thinking skills and assess your patient. Look at your patient, not your monitor. So in the nursing process or the A in ADPI, you were going to be asking your patient questions doing your head to toe assessment and your awesome critical thinking skills. To get an idea of what actually might be going on with them and what you need to assess for further. So now let's talk about the diagnosis step of the nursing process, the D in ADPI. So when you hear a diagnosis for the first time, you probably would be thinking about a medical diagnosis, but this is not the case in nursing. So the nursing diagnosis is not a medical diagnosis. The nursing diagnosis revolves around the patient's response to what's happening without them. The nursing diagnosis is the nurse's clinical judgment about the client's response to actual or potential health conditions or needs. The diagnosis reflects not only that the patient is in pain, but the pain has caused other problems such as anxiety, poor nutrition, and conflict with the family, or has the potential to cause a complication. For example, diagnosis is not a medical diagnosis, such as asthma. But if your patient with asthma is really restless, nervous, anxious, the nursing diagnosis could become somewhat like anxiety because that is the patient's response to asthma. That does not make sense, right? So let's take another example. If you're taking a care of a patient who had a stroke and maybe can use the left side of the body, you may write a nursing diagnosis of impaired physical mobility or impaired swallowing depending on the situation. Because those are the patient's responses to their stroke, but it's not the medical diagnosis of the stroke itself. I hope that makes sense. So the D in ADPI or the diagnosis type of the nursing process is not a medical diagnosis. It is a nursing diagnosis which is the patient's response to uh, what's going on with them. Now it is important to know that the nursing diagnosis are actually standardized. There is an organization called the North American Nursing Diagnosis Association or NANDA International or NANDA I for short. And they actually have made a whole list of standardized nursing diagnosis for you to use. This actually makes it so easy for you because all you need to do is choose from the list because it's standardized twice already. So most of your nursing text. Now let's move on to the next step of the nursing process. So some nursing schools actually put O in first, making it ADOPI. And the O is the outcome identification. Now, outcome identification in the nursing process means that you decide what it looks like when your patients meet actually their goals. It's basically goal setting. So far, you assess your patient, you've come up with a nursing diagnosis, and now it's time to create some goals for them. And then these are the outcomes that you need and hope to see based on the assessment and the diagnosis. The nurse sets a measurable and achievable short and long range goals for the patient. That might include moving from bed to chair at least three times per day, ma ma maintaining adequate nutrition by eating smaller, more frequent meals, resolving conflicting counseling, managing pain through adequate medication. Assessment data, diagnosis, and goals are written in the patient's care plan so that the nurses as well as other health professionals caring for the patients have access to it. The goals that your patients hopes that 
They will meet and you'll also describe uh, exactly what it looks like when they meet their goals or, their, or that outcome. So let's use our stroke uh, from example from before. If you have a nursing diagnosis of impaired swallowing, you might work with your patient to create a goal. Or an outcome of the patient will show no signs or symptoms of aspiration after eating. Or the patient will demonstrate techniques to prevent aspirations during meals. Those are both really a good outcomes or goals for that patient. So you were just identifying the outcome or the goal for your patient, the goals that your patient wants to achieve. And now we'll talk about being the next step in the nursing process, which is the P in ADPI, which stands for planning. And planning just means that you're figuring out like a game plan of how your patient is going to achieve their goals. So these are really the interventions that you will do to make those goals happen. So let's keep with our stroke example from before. For a patient with impaired swallowing, we will demonstrate techniques to prevent aspirations during meals. That was a pretty good goal, right? The interventions that you complain or maybe working with the speech language pathology to figure out the best swallowing technique for them. The nurse could encourage them to stick with those techniques and the nurse could also continue to educate them on those swallowing techniques. So all those in the interventions would be a good for the nurses to do. And all of this is part of the P in ADPI, the planning step of the nursing process. Planning out exactly what you will do as a nurse to help the patient reach their goals. The next step of the nursing process is implementation, which is the I in ADPI. This is actually where you do the planned interventions that you played in the previous steps. So you have assessed your patient, you have come up with an awesome nursing diagnosis for them, you work with them on a setting on outcomes or goals. Now we need to make those goals happen. Nursing care is implemented according to the care plan. So continuity of care for the patient during hospitalization and in preparation for discharge needs to be assured. Care is documented in the patient's record. So in the implementation phase, you are simply doing interventions that you come up with the, within the planning phase. So in our example, you would set up an evaluation with the speech language pathology. He consistently encourage your patient to use those swallowing techniques and you'll be educating them on how to do them properly. So that's the implementation phase of the nursing process. It's all about making those interventions happen. And finally, the last step of the nursing process is evaluation. E in ADPI, which stands for evaluation where you evaluate if a patient's method goes in order to help them meet their goals or what new goals may be, should be created. This is basically an assessment all over again. You're always evaluating your patient's progress, where they are and their recovery journey and what needs to be changed in the previous steps to help them meet their goals again. Both the patient status and the effectiveness of the nursing care must be continuously evaluated and the care plan must be modified as needed. So that's, so the last half of the nursing process is evaluation, where you are just really reassessing your patient to make sure that they are meeting their goals, are making progress towards their goals and see if anything needs to be changed or not. Those are the steps of the nursing process, which is ADPI, assessment, diagnosis, planning, intervention, and evaluation.